The concept of the schema and schema theory can be traced to Plato and Aristotle, while Kant is considered to have been the first to refer to them as organizing structures used to understand and interpret our world. Kant viewed schemas as mediators of the external and internal mental structures, which both shaped and was shaped by experience. Schemas, therefore, are higher order cognitive structures existing in our memory that are the sum of all gained knowledge and experience, which dynamically changes and updates as a result of assimilating and accommodating old knowledge with new knowledge through perception, language, thought, and memory. As a result, schema theory is viewed as a connectionist model or pre-existing mental structures with organized categories which allow a person to make sense of new information. Learning takes place within working memory where prior knowledge schemas respond to environmental stimuli which leads to interpreting or making sense of new experiences and accommodating, assimilating, discarding, or the creation of new mental frameworks to organize these new ideas. Learners are therefore active concept and theory makers, weaving between the experiential and the conceptual. Schemas can be used as memory objects to help us recognize and identify patterns. A distributive pattern of memory activation in response to particular stimuli makes relevant memory objects available. Gary believes we mediate experiences and learning through a cognitive field that determines what interpretations and understandings of experiences are probable. Comprehension is an interactive process where learners retrieve existing and relevant information from long-term memory in order to make sense of new information, which forges the construction of a memory link between new information and pre-existing relevant memories. Cultural modes of experience further mediate our perceptions of the world through culturally embodied experiences within our social community, which continue to shape and reshape the ideal and material artifacts we encounter. Intercultural communication involves aligning each communicator's schemata of other cultures through refinement and modification, demonstrating how contents of thought differ across cultures. Passive shifts in our schemas further depend on organization of prior knowledge. Recent memories dominate past experiences and the educational scaffolding experienced. Derry believes schema changes does not necessarily require deep reflection, direct challenges to prior beliefs, or feelings of disequilibrium. Rather, it requires both the activation of relevant cognitive fields, plus the introduction of useful, understandable information at critical times during the model construction process. Schema theory enlists both bottom-up and top-down processing for new incoming data processing. Schemata are hierarchically organized with the most general at the top and more specific at the bottom. As new data is processed, it is categorized and fed through the bottom and is generalized into a more relevant understanding at the top. Top-down processing uses general predictions and searches for specific matches known as conceptually driven ideas. Failure to activate appropriate schema can lead to misunderstanding. This failure to activate an appropriate schema may be due to a lack of sufficient clues to effectively use a bottom-up processing model to activate schemata, or possibly not possessing the necessary schema. Consequently, the appropriate schemata must exist and must be activated during the processing to achieve understanding.